Hey guys, just got three quick gameplays for you today. I'm going to be going over how I fly the P51D30. So as my uh, advice and what I've learned from playing them. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to side climb. I'll put it in about a 20 degree climb if you're fully uh, upgraded. Maybe 15 degree if you stop. Obviously, climb off to the side. Hence the name. I'm not trying to uh, talk down to you or make you sound stupid. But a lot of people... They like climb a little bit to the side, you need to climb about 45 degrees to be effective. Even low level, uh, low tier BF 109s will out climb you. And as you can see our side climb hasn't been as effective as I hoped because all the enemies are still above us. Or at e they're at equal energy as us. So as I get close to them, I put my nose down horizontal. The reason I do this is to level out the plane, which means we'll be getting a lot more, uh, we're increasing our speed rather than our uh, altitude, which is far more important. We want to have a good energy level in terms of speed rather than altitude. Add a, uh, you need speed more than altitude in this plane, really, to be effective. So we're going to be fighting in both a boom and zoom and energy fighting style. As you can see, this is en this bit is energy fighting. He doesn't have the speed to follow me in this manoeuvre. So we're essentially completely and utterly safe here. So the next point, you can see me using our flaps. And he's on fire. That's kill number one. Still dangerous as we're on fire, so we'll turn away slightly. It's kill one. Now the same thing, we're gonna do the exact same thing to this G2. He doesn't have the speed to follow me, but this pilot's a little bit uh, more aware of what I was gonna do, so he dives away. But this maneuver Got a high yo yo. It only works if you know that you have more energy than your opponent. It's energy being speed in this case. If you're about one kilometer below an enemy, it's far better to be faster than him than it is to be a. Uh, well, I'd rather be faster than an enemy below them slightly than slightly higher. You can easily regain speed if you just dive away. But there's a fur ball below us. I'm pretty confident that there's no any no other enemies higher than me at this point. I'm gonna to commit to a pass. Now this is perfect for situation for firing. But I've, uh, I haven't played my I haven't played Americans in quite a while, so my aim's a bit uh, shady with the 50s. But we're not turning. Want to keep our speed up. That is the most important thing in this point. Speed over anything. Now we use that speed and convert it into altitude. We're going to dive straight down. We're easily regaining that speed. Now you don't want to commit to turns in this point. So you can see I am rolling slightly. And then I just turn straight out of it. I'm going to extend. If he turned back onto me now to get a shot, there'd just been he wouldn't have any chance of getting a shot because I'd have just separated that quickly. Now usually you wouldn't want to go into a climb this steep, you want to keep it maybe ten degrees, get the separation before you start climbing again. But here I'm trying to bait him and he's he takes the bait, he's coming up to try and shoot me. But he doesn't have the energy for it. So he's had to level his plane back out. So this is a really fun plane to fly guys if you're, you're quite good at, if you know how to fly in War Thunder and the different techniques, you feel very, you just feel good getting kills like this. I do manage to create his right wing and I think he's going to crash, but as you can see he tries to turn around on me, turn slightly. He takes a few lucky shots here that scare me a little bit. One weakness of this point is it's rudder. You won't be able to um, 
you won't be able to yaw very well for fan shooting. But we do the exact same manoeuvre as we've done for the last two kills. If he takes the bait and tries to shoot you, then he's just going to stall himself and make him an easy target. And if he doesn't do anything, we're just going to catch him. We're a lot faster than him. And that's kill number three. As you can see, he's straight ahead of us now. That'll be here for a nine. He's the last uh, player on the team. So we'll recap there. We side climbed. When we met the enemy, we put the plane level and got our speed up. When enemies came into us, we used energy fighting techniques. We have a lot speed of, we're faster than them. We have a lot more uh, energy retention than them. We just energy trap them. It's all about knowing what your enemy's going to do and predicting. But this is the last player on the enemy team alive. I did lose track of him and I was just flying around. I'm on 69% fuel. Or 69% energy frog because I wanted to save fuel. And I spot him off my right wing at 2 kilometers. So this is a pretty bad situation for me to be in. I'm quite slow. He's got an energy got an energy advantage. So we turn into him. Turn under him. Let me extend a bit because I thought I might have been able to outrun him. But he's going to catch us. So I roll underneath him again. We we'll use our great flaps here. As long as you've got speed, you will outturn most things. Apart from Spitfires and Zeros, obviously. But 650 cows do hit very hard. That's kill number four. That's the end of the game. So, side climb. Level out. Get energy. Have a boom and zoom at enemies below you. But if you are going to boom and zoom, make sure to keep your speed up. Don't turn. Don't go in a vertical when there's enemies around you in a fur ball. Go in. Shoot. Then escape. Put it in a 10 degree climb, then go steeper once you're about a kilometre away from them, then re come in and re boom again. It is a genuinely great plane to fly, I do love it. I think I already have the, uh, I think, yeah, I've earned all the research and stuff, the, uh, tal not talisman, can't remember what it's called. Anyway, this is the next game, I think we're on LL main. I think I do actually know this map. You can see here the poor rudder. The actual aiming things are a little bit uh, reluctant to go where I'm aiming. But this, not an easy, sh uh, not a hard shot. I don't think he was paying attention. Now, I ignore my own real way because he could have easily had a shot at me there if he was a bit of a competent pilot. But, we did it in a 10 degree climb, then we went uh, put it into a steep degree climb. Luckily for us, he does crash, but got two Focke Wolf closing. One of them's a TA 152C ground attack variant. The other one's a Focke Wolf 190 Anton. Now the TA 152 overshoots and then decides to RTB. But you notice I don't turn after them, keeping my speed up. If you're going to fight an enemy, make sure you do it on your own terms if possible. Now that Focke Wolf has turned. You can just see how fast I'm going away from it. He initially had the energy advantage. If I'd have turned back after him, I'd have blocked, uh, blew all my energy. So now we put it into a climb. You can just see the great energy retention, even a climb, a 20 degree climb. We're not losing speed that much. Now I'm trying to bait him up here. He doesn't take the bait initially. This is my fault, I shouldn't really have done this. He does take the bait, but he would have got a shot on target here. So I immediately pull out of it. When you have all the advent when you have all the advantages, you shouldn't go head on. Or take risky shots like that. But I've got a better engine than him, I've got a better flaps than him, I've got a better fuselage than him. So like I said at the beginning, I've not really been flying my American planes that well, so I'm not really great with the 50 cars, especially this leading. But I'm using the uh, the dust on the, f the ground to try and lead him. I'm getting a bit frustrated here, but he goes into a turn. There's not really much you can do here. But he lucky for us, he crashes. 
and everyone's favourite bomber, the J288. Take a few speculative shots. I led too much there. But I said fuck that, I'm not not risking it, not throwing away this. So this fuck off on 90, he comes in. So I put it level. I want to get my speed up. Now this is a bit of a risky manoeuvre, but it does work pretty well. As you can see. Now he's gone into the vertical here. If he just turned off to the left and kept it level, I might have not been able to follow him. But I've got a lot better power than him. I can turn a lot better than him. It doesn't matter that he's gone into a vertical, all that means is he's just bled more of his energy. And don't manage to get the nose around to kill him on that pass. But there's nothing you can do now apart from try to run. The blow off his, uh, we don't blow off his left wing, but we do damage it slightly, uh, make it black. And he crashes. As you can see, it's more of an energy fighter with boom and zoom capabilities, really. But we go on to our next game. So this is a game on, I think it's Iwo Jima, or one of the other maps like that. Maybe Guadalcanal, actually. But we get an Earth spawn. We get an Earth spawn, and they, I don't know if they do, actually. They're, uh, they're arm, army fighters, well, obviously. But we side climb pretty well. All the enemies are below us, which is always good, which means you can pretty much club Japanese if they're all below you and low on energy. So coming in, if you want to look for the tight that's most opportune to you. Right now, all those three immediately below me, they all turned sh sharply, which I wouldn't have been able to follow them. Now my friendly here, he turns, it's a bad idea. I can't follow him, if we turn there we'd have bled all our energy, all our speed, and we'd just become sitting ducks for the rest of his uh, allied friends, uh, the rest of his enemy friends. So we extend, put it in a 20 degree, 20 degree climb, sorry. We get our altitude back. There's not nothing that those enemy fighters can do now to me. We're going to level out our nose. We want to get some more speed in the horizontal. Which means we it means that we gain speed as well as maintaining our altitude. Now all our friendlies are dead in that little furball below, so there's no reason for me to rush him. We do have a friendly P51 coming in, but he's going to be jumped by an A7M1. Now you want to set yourself so you want to set yourself up for the longest time on target as possible. So I'm going to wait for this A7M1 to get uh, in front of me. So I'm not having to uh, dive. No, I'm, basically, means the camera doesn't go funny when you dive. But our P51 is going to turn. But we do get a good kill on the uh, A7M. But that P51 has just died, so there's no reason at all for me to rush this. I have all the advantages. So again, we're extending. This is a boom and zoom type play style. Can't really energy fight the Japanese when they're on. The Japanese have very uh, low stall speeds. And uh, you have to have a significant energy advantage over them in order to be able to energy fight them. So here I'm just um, it's kind of booming and zooming. We're going to try some energy fighting here and it's going to have mixed results. So I initially was focusing more on that KI-43, just because it was closest. Now I didn't think this J2M2 would take the bait, but he does. Which is catching me by surprise, you can just see his energy retention is pretty good. He's actually gaining on me. Now he does manage to drain our water tank, which puts me in a bit of a precarious position. But again, nice little kill. He didn't have the energy to follow me up there. He just stored himself out, made him an easy target. Now this is where I, I mess it up. I fuck it up. My engine is obviously going to die in a few minutes because I've run out of water. So I did try and want to rush this. I put it in far too st uh, steep of a climb. That's uh, mistake number one. Secondly, I'm going to try an energy fight in, which is mistake number two. It may have worked if it was about four kilometers away and I could have got my speed back up. So, ideally here, I would have gone straight vertical. 
and then Sparrow climbed. But he had this, you can just see how quick he turned onto me. So, this is it, that's game over for me here. So, while I get uh, my face blown off, I'll just go, go over that again. So, you want to side climb pretty heavily, get up to wherever the enemy is, then turn back in. You want to boom and zoom. If you, well, I'd boom and zoom as a standard and the energy fight fighters, which like a boom and zoom normal way, but energy fight fighters that uh, present themselves to use good targets, slow moving planes, planes that are stalling. It's a it's a really good airplane, I think. I really do like this plane. But uh, those are my little tips that I've learned. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.